Hi, this is Pete, and in this video I want to demonstrate how we can <clears throat> utilize an AutoCAD flat pattern to generate an inventor sheet metal part. So this came up in a course I had taught recently, and so um, I cheated a little bit, and I actually started from inventor. So uh, just basically what I would do to get the flat pattern in this case is I go ahead and do a save copy as. I've already got it all taken care of so I'm not actually going to overwrite it. Um, actually, uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll just redo it. So basically then we would come over to the geometry tab. I would uncheck this, merge it into polyline, rebase it to the first quadrant and hit OK. Again, I've already done that, but that's how I get my flat pattern. So that's in AutoCAD then, this is the flat pattern that we, actually don't, nope, sorry, one other one. Here we go. This is the flat pattern that we get. So we get a spline shape based on the flat from the inventor shape. So this is the one that I'm going to pretend that we have from AutoCAD and I'm going to show you how to form that in inventor. So I come over to inventor and I'm using 2020 but there's a couple of helpful things that we can do and with a new part, just a new sheet metal part started, I'm actually going to switch over to the 3D model tab and I'm going to import that AutoCAD shape. So I'll grab the shape we were just looking at, I'll hit open, and then it's simply a matter of placing it onto the shape or onto the sketch plane that I want. So in this case the X, Y. And what's interesting about this is by using the import, and it oh, just means I haven't saved the part yet, it will actually create an associative DWG underlay. That means if the original shape were to change, the inventor part would update. So I wanted to show you that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it actually makes a link to the AutoCAD so what we can do is we can try to face that but it doesn't actually show up so it's a little different than importing it or converting it to an inventor sketch so we have to create a new sketch on the XY plane and then I want to go right click and project the geometry to create the face but I just can't grab it and this is where we have a special project tool called Project DWG Geometry. So I'm going to project that. And this is where it gets a little bit annoying, but it doesn't automatically project the loop if it includes a spline. So I'll go relatively quickly, but you can see I'm having to go around all of the different shapes. So again, I'll motor through this relatively quickly just to kind of get it done. But um, I'll show you another option for this later that could expedite the process. But you have to decide how accurate does everything need to be. So we're almost done. I made a simple shape on purpose just to kind of save a little bit of time. And once we project all of those edges, whew, all done, we can finish the sketch. And then we can face it. So just because I knew uh, I grabbed the top face of the plane, I'm going to go ahead and grab this and hit apply or OK. And now we've got the shape. Just makes it a little bit easier to see everything since we've got the sketch now on top. So that is the gist of how we can get that flat shape in. And the tricky bit now is it's a flat pattern, so eventually it has to be formed. Now my AutoCAD shape didn't have too much information on it because I grabbed it from Inventor, but a normal flat pattern would probably have a bend table or something. So I'm just going to assume that we know the bends, and I'm going to go ahead and try to form this. And in this case, we're going to use something called the Fold tool. So I will create a new sketch on the top surface of this plate, and I will project geometry Nah, that's where I got to project the AutoCAD geometry again. And I'm just going to do one at a time just to kind of show you what can happen. So I'm going to project this and this. And I'll explain why I do that in a little bit. 
and I'll also project this and this. So I'll go ahead and hit finish the sketch. We now have some geometry and then we're going to use the fold tool. So the fold command allows us to use a sketch and we can grab a sketch line and we can say this is a bend. It either is the center line of a bend, the start or end of a bend and we can control the direction. But what happens is sometimes it doesn't latch on to anything. It doesn't seem to want to do anything with that. So we may have to switch it, go to a different bend line and then we get the result we want. So in this case though, since I picked the bottom of the bend, I actually want to use it as a bottom. And I don't want to bend it up. This is where again we'd have to have a bend table or a little bit of knowledge of the part. I want to bend it downward at 45 degrees. So notice that it's exactly replicating the bend. You can see the little red preview that shows you how it's going to form and that's all based on your sheet metal rules. So we don't have time to go into that today but that's something that you'd have to verify that your sheet metal rules, the bend radius, the thickness, all of that matches up with the original AutoCAD design. So go ahead and hit OK and you can see it forms the part. Cool. So I'm going to share that sketch over here, just drag it up, fold it again, and like I said, you try to use the center line, and if it doesn't work, that's okay, don't give up, pick a different one, and then just play with the extents. Now in this case, it's trying to form it the other way, so you have these flip controls as well, so you can form it the other direction, think of it as it wants to bend this way and then the arced arrow here wants to bend it up and you can of course control that. So this time we do want to bend it up but I know that this is 90 degrees again because of sheet metal rules everything works we hit OK. So that's the gist of it so I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll project the inside edges of each finish the sketch and uh, I'll go pretty quickly here, but we'll go ahead and pick on these bend lines. Uh, we'll say that's 45 and down. So we're going to bend it that way. And the cool part is we can just hit apply and do all of them really quickly. So once you kind of get into the zone and you get a bunch of similar bends, you can go really fast. I do find that relaunching the fold command seems to work a little bit better when you've got uh, a different bend that you're trying to accomplish. We'll flip that up. Again, that's going to be the start of the bend and we'll apply that as well. And voila! So you can see in just a couple moments we're able to get that shape in there. I'll turn off the sketch just for clarity's sake. Uh, oh, and the original one too. <laughs> there we go. So we turn off both the sketch and the AutoCAD reference and there's our shape. So I'll go ahead and save this. I'm going to call this the replicated one. I'll overwrite the original. And now just to kind of compare and contrast these, look at the eye properties, the physical eye properties, and you can see that's got a volume of 15.208. And if I go to the replicated version, Eye properties, update that, it's 15.208. So you see it actually does a really good job because it's all based off of the K factor, the thickness, the bend radius, etc. It can come pretty close to the original design. So that's it. I mean that's how you would do that process. Works pretty slick. There are a couple of things I want to warn you about though. And uh, if you notice the spline, so when I pushed this out, I originally in AutoCAD had it as a spline shape. And notice that it was a little bit harder to, to uh, put a, the final profile together because I had to pick all these individual lines. But if I export that 
and I replace the splines, it actually replaces spline shapes with straight edges. Or if your original AutoCAD profile had straight edges instead of a spline shape, so just to recap that from Inventor, if I was to save a copy as, B, sure. When I get over to the geometry, I replace the splines. So instead of having a spline, it does a chord length to approximate the shape within a certain tolerance. What happens there is when I get that shape going, now it's easier to work with because it makes it an easy polyline to select. So if I was to create the sketch here, choose the XY plane. Now when I go to project that, I can project the entire edge. So it gets a similar result, but um, Inventor with the Project EWG geometry, if it's not a spline, it's just a little bit easier. So that's something to be aware of, maybe not a pitfall, but this next one is definitely a pitfall. So the very first time that I had built this, I didn't pay attention to the way I had it in Inventor and I used the trim to bend. So when I did the trim to bend, I got some really interesting results. So uh, if I go to use the fold, and I'll just do the 90 degree one. So I pick this, it actually lets me pick the mid plane here. And I'll go 90 and up and I say, yeah, that looks great. And I hit apply and it actually just made the bend. It didn't bring the whole thing up. So I'm not completely sure what the limitation is there, but I'm guessing it kind of treated this as a separate shape. So be careful about that with trim the bend. It seemed like Inventor didn't like that. Uh, it could be a limitation of the software. I'd have to do some digging. But I had no problems when I went and I used a spline type shape. In fact, it was pretty flawless. So just want to give you guys this video. Hopefully this helps you understand how you can use the fold command to uh, create a shape based on an AutoCAD flat pattern. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.